Sorry about that. I accidentally um, pressed the button to stop the video, so we had to have two videos. Um, so this is week six, part two, and we are going to pick up right where we left off. We're at chapter eight. So chapter eight is called Poverty is Fucking Expensive. And in this chapter, she talks a lot about um, basically how it costs more for poor people to survive than it costs for rich people to survive. And she goes into all the different nuances and various ways that that is true. So she starts out this chapter by talking about how she once lost a whole truck over a few hundred bucks. And this may seem ridiculous to some, but she basically had some unpaid parking tickets, which got she admits that the unpaid parking tickets were her fault, but the unpaid parking tickets may have cost a few hundred bucks at most. And um, instead of being able to pay that, um, I'm sure she was just trying to survive and make ends meet. And the truck ends up getting towed. Well, when it gets towed, she is broke at the moment because she didn't get paid that day. And so she has to wait until she gets paid. And they told her to $300 to get the car out. Well, she waits until she gets paid, and by the time she waits until she gets paid, it's been a few days, and when she tries to pay them the two or three hundred, they say, oh no, it's going to be over a thousand dollars now, because every day we're charging you to keep the car. So every day it's going to be a couple hundred dollars, and she said she didn't even make a couple hundred dollars at the time every day, which means that she was never going to be able to afford to get that car out. And so she had to lose her truck and therefore ended up losing her job and her home as well. Um, so we can see how just not having a couple hundred dollars completely ruined and wrecked her life. Whereas if this was a rich person who had forgotten to pay their parking tickets, which they probably wouldn't have ever had it towed because they have no problem paying the parking tickets. But if it had been one of them, those parking tickets would have gotten their car towed also, but the difference is they would have been able to get it out that day. So it would have only cost a couple hundred dollars. Um, so then if we skip on, she also talks about a time that um, she lost an apartment because her roommate got the flu and wasn't able to pay her half. Another time, um, she um, three, four. She says it's amazing that the things which are absolute crisis for me are simple annoyances for people with money. Anything can make you lose your apartment. Because any unexpected problem that pops up, like they do, can set off that Rube Goldberg device. Um, she goes on to talk about how on page 145 that um, she read a book for people in poverty written by someone in middle class containing real life tips for saving pennies and such. She says, it's all fantastic advice. Buy in bulk, buy a lot when there's a sale, hand wash everything you can, make sure you keep up on vehicle and indoor. She said, of course, very little of it was actually practicable. Bulk buying in general is cheaper, but you have to have a lot of money to spend on stuff you don't actually need yet. Hand washing saves on the utilities, but nobody actually has the time for that. If I could afford to replace stuff before it was worn out, vehicle maintenance wouldn't be much of an issue, but you really can't rinse the cheap filters again and again. Quality costs money up front. In the long term, it makes way more sense to buy a good toaster, but if the good toaster is 30 bucks right now and the crappiest toaster of them all is 10, it doesn't matter how many times I have to replace it, 10 bucks it is because I don't have any extra 10s. So that kind of summarizes what the plight is for poor people surviving takes everything they have every day all day and anytime something comes up as it does because things are always going to come up we are did that it is hard for harder for them to catch back up so when you don't have money it's impossible to ever 
accumulate a pile of money because you're constantly having to spend that money just to survive because corporations take advantage of this. She talks about this when she starts talking about um, banks. She talks about how um, Walmart is so popular among the serving class. This is on 146 um, because it costs three bucks to cash your paycheck, flat fee. And they let you keep all of it except for that fee. Banks, on the other hand, are a giant pain in the ass. I load them, actually, not fire of a 10,000 suns level, but I don't enjoy being in them. They seem to me to exist only to take your money. Then she goes into all these fees, and that can pile up and cause you to end up owing the bank money. Um, and so she, and she leads that into the credit and how that plays out because of poor credit, because of poor um, banking decisions, then you end up um, that continues to cause you to have to spend more money just to be able to get financed or to get out of thing. Um, so she also talks about um, lenders, and I don't know that they're as common as they used to be, um, but payday lenders used to be basically these are people who will give you a few hundred bucks as long as you can prove that you have a job and you're getting a consistent check, but every time you get paid, you have to pay them back. And for poor people, that's almost impossible to ever catch up on. So you get stuck in this cycle because you give them $200 that you borrowed, but then you have to borrow that right back because you, ha you don't make enough to be able to make it to the next paid day without that $200. So it's one of those, again, catch-22 situations where you're constantly in a cycle of giving money to the payday lender and getting it back. And she says she doesn't even hate them because they serve a purpose. Without them, she wouldn't be able to pay those bills sometimes or um, you know, take off when she's sick if she needs to. So um, it becomes clear to the reader that it's, it's all a catch-22. It's all a bad cycle. It just keeps happening over and over. It's because you don't have enough money and people, a uh, huge corporation will exploit this from the poor because they know that that's how it works. Um, she then talks about, you know, moving into new apartments, all this being homeless and having to move. Well, that also ends up costing extra for people who are poor because you have to... Um, Places that you can get in that don't have good credit and are pretty expensive, um, but they end up being more expensive because you have to pay first months, last months, and deposit up front, which is like three times the amount of a normal monthly. So you're immediately starting off giving them all your money, and again, if anything comes up, you're out of luck. So, she talks about how it's impossible to be good with money when you don't have any. This is on page 154, and how all this advice is very well and good, but when you don't have any money, you can't save any money. And um, she points out, when it comes to money on 155, when it comes to money, I think in value, not sums. If I run $100 short, I can call it up run up against the grace period for late payments, or possibly I will be sort of fucked. It depends on whether or not I find a solution to the short-term problem. Um, but she says, here's the thing. We know the value of money. We work for ours. If we're at $10 an hour, we earn 83 cents before taxes every five minutes. We know exactly what a dollar's worth. It's counted in how many more times you have to duck and bend sideways out of the drive through window, or how many floors you can vacuum, or how many boxes you can fill. Um, but she talks about how it may seem so 
some people to spend their hard-earned money that they don't have very much of on something like a gaming system. But um, she says for her family that provides endless hours of fun and escapism and entertainment from the hard life that they're living. Um, so when you think of it in terms of value, it's more valuable than the actual money. Um, so I'm going to start at 155 and then go to 156. At the very bottom it says, It's impossible to win unless you are very lucky. For you to start to do better, something has to go right. And stay that way for long enough for you to get on your feet. Well, in years that I had a job, I didn't mind terribly, and that paid me well enough to get into an apartment that met all the basic standards. I've done less well in years where I didn't have steady work. The trouble's been that my luck simply hasn't held out for long enough. It seems like just when I've caught up, something happens to set me back again. And I think this is a normal feeling for most people who are living in poverty. Okay, so watch both um, week six video one and video two and um here in a couple days i will post week seven's video for chapters um nine and ten have a good week